Yo, what's up? We out here yet again. It's the Buff Missionary. Another morning here. Six inches of snow. Berrien Springs, Michigan. It is what it is. But thankfully, we're inside right now. We're going to go through just a little bit more of this book, Steps to Christ, Peace Above the Storm, In Search of Peace, which are all true, I believe. And uh, just want to remind you guys to like, subscribe, and share this with someone else. This practical... The reason I appreciate this book so much is because of the practical living that you get from it the thing that has always frustrated me about christianity religion spirituality is how people make it this thing where you have to memorize uh a through z uh, one through ten you know what i'm saying and it, it becomes it becomes something where if you get the right answer if you know the right answer you get a passing grade as opposed to can you exemplify these things in the way that you live does it actually change the way that you operate and interact with other people so that's why I appreciate this. And these lessons here, I feel like, are really practical and really easily applicable, honestly, uh, to our daily life and our daily experience. So anyways, let's continue on this here. It says, it was to redeem us that Jesus lived and suffered and died. To redeem us that Jesus lived and suffered and died. The entire purpose of Christ's existence here on earth, earth was for us. He became a man of sorrows that we might be made partakers of everlasting joy. Dang, you talk about a contrast there. It, it, it goes on. I, I'll, let it, I'll let it speak for itself. God permitted his beloved son, full of grace and truth, to come from a world of indescribable glory to a world marred and blighted with sin, darkened with the shadow of death and the curse. He permitted him to leave the bosom of his love, the adoration of the angels to suffer shame, insult, humiliation, hatred, and death. That's crazy. We... If you believe in Christianity, if you subscribe to that, then we believe and we look forward to this idea, this place called heaven, right? And we look at it as the, the redemption of everything that we've had to go through here on this earth, the, the freedom and the, the liberation from pain, suffering, sorrow, sin, death. And yet the one who was there and whose character was perfect enough to remain there, decided that it wasn't good enough to stay there because we had fallen and he wanted to do something about it. That to me is amazing. There's this contrast going on. We look as humans to get out of the pain, to get out of the suffering, to get to the, the comfort zone, right? <laughs> the, the penthouse, so to speak. As opposed to realizing that there was someone who was already in the penthouse suite and he said, you know what? The people down below me, they need something. I, I have something that can help benefit their experience. I'm going to go down there, become like them, be one of them, live their experience. That way I can help them and eventually give them that hope of moving up in their experience and in their character. Wow. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You're starting to talk about this this great contrast that that's the word that really sticks in my mind as i read through uh this paragraph here of someone who was up here perfect in character and deserved nothing but the best and you have us humanity fallen humanity in in sin mired in sin the the muddy nonsense and mess of sin who deserved everything we had coming our way the wages of sin is death oh uh, we we earned that we earned that we earned them wages <laughs> but this one here, who didn't deserve any of that, came down here to take it for us so we could get what he deserved, the perfection and the, the, the holiness and the, the redemption of character to, so that we could live with the Father once again. It's amazing. Behold him in the wilderness, in Gethsemane, upon the cross, three of the, the big moments in Christ's life where he did that for you. This man went through 40 days in the wilderness, not eating, getting tempted about food for you <laughs> and me. I, I, you know, I, I, I'll throw this out there as a comparison. I, I like doing Spartan races. And as I was researching yesterday, apparently there's they have these hurricane heats where you can do 
You can do a Spartan race with a team for like four hours. You can do it for eight hours. You can do it for 12 hours. You can do it for 24 hours. That's crazy. I, they, they have death races, they call them too. <laughs> Imagine that, where you're just going like all night, 100 miles plus, whatever. I'm not going to front. For as much as I love Spartan Race, I have zero interest in doing any of that. And that's for me. <laughs> you think I'm going to get out there and do that for somebody else? Willingly? <laughs> of my own volition? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Highly doubtful. Highly doubtful. And yet you have this man here who is willing to spend 40 days out in the wilderness. Roughing it. No food. I don't know if he had water. But he was fasting out there. For us, for people who wouldn't even appreciate it. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's hard for me to understand. I, I get so animated when I talk about these things and I think about these things because it's that unbelievable to me that someone would do that. Especially knowing in advance that a lot of people wouldn't even accept it or could care less about it. That blows my mind, blows my mind. But it's a great example. It's a great example for us in how we should view other people and, and not judge them based on their reception of us or what we perceive to be as truth. The spotless son of God took upon himself the burden of sin. This man was out here sweating bullets of blood, sweating blood for you and me. Out here dying on the cross, nailed. And you can do the research to see how the Romans like to use this, this instrument of torture all right. This wasn't just we're going to put you up and hang you out to dry. That was part of it. But that wasn't the whole thing at all. There was a lot of pain going on here. He did that for you and me. <laughs> Man, I, I feel bad. I feel bad thinking of the, the, the level in my humanity, the level of, that I'm willing to, to suffer for someone else is nowhere near that. It's nowhere near that. And I'm not saying that I need to be willing to necessarily all right let me go let me go get up on this cross for someone else i'm not saying that but there's a question that needs to be asked about what is my perception of other people and how i view them and how i value them am i willing to see them the way that christ did and let me clarify the reason i'm saying that is because in other parts of the world you you may be from these places so you this may be very familiar to you there are a lot of places who uh, around Easter time, they will actually take on crosses and they will actually put nails into the palms of their hand, their wrists and all this kind of stuff. And they'll walk around as, as kind of a penance. There are a lot of other religions who have this kind of self, uh, I forget the term for it, but they, they beat themselves up for the sake of the religion. And I personally, right, you may disagree, but personally, I don't believe that that is what Christ is calling us to do uh, when we're talking about following in his example. I think it's deeper than that. I think embracing punishment for punishment's sake is very surface level application of what Christ is talking about when he says, follow me. And we see that he, he went through the wilderness, through Gethsemane, Gethsemane and the cross. I think that follow me is something is referring to something a little bit deeper than just the punishment and the pain for pain and punishment's sake. All right. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. It says, the spotless son of God took upon himself the burden of sin. Didn't deserve it. Could have dodged it. He took it on anyway. He who, he who had been one with God felt in his soul the awful separation that sin makes between God and man. He felt that and this wrung from his lips the anguish cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt that it was the burden of sin, the sense of its terrible enormity, of its separation of the soul from God. It was this that broke the heart of the son of God. And again, it comes back to the question, how willing are we to feel that for other people? It's deeper than just the pain. It's deeper than just that suffering. It's about feeling that burden for humanity that's just as lost as me. Regardless of their skin color, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what disabilities they may or may not have, regardless of our preferences, regardless of our political opinions, <laughs> am I willing 
to see that this, this sin problem affects everyone and not just people like me. And that the salvation that Christ offers is for everyone and not just people like me. Man, if our hearts would break more for people who are not like us, this world would be a very different place. I can promise you that. But check this out. This great sacrifice was not made in order to create in the Father's heart a love for man, not to make him willing to save. See, sometimes we have it backwards. And I'll say the line that really sticks out in my mind at this point. Stop working to earn a free gift. <laughs> stop willing. Stop working to earn a free gift. No, no. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The Father loves us. Not because of the great propitiation, but he provided the propitiation because he loves us. All right. Don't get it twisted. You can't work to earn something that is given freely out of God's love for you. But then by contrast, think about the application. Do we, when we look at the truth that we have and the benefits that we want to bestow on others, do we make other people work to earn it from us? Or... Do we view them the same way that God does, realizing that it's humanity that needs the exact same thing as we do, and we're willing to give it freely? We were talking about this in one of my classes yesterday, about how, um, in brief, I could go on about this, but there was there's a, a curriculum, a Bible curriculum, that a couple divisions in the General Conference made for, uh, it was for North America and Australia, and there are some people in those divisions who they, they, they see how successful it's been. Other divisions want to be able to say, hey, can we use this too? We see it's working for you. And there's this greed and, and this human selfishness that's like, oh, no, 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 we, we don't want to give it away. We, we got our secret sauce. We, we don't want you to have it now. You'd think that the, the main goal would take the precedence, right? Like, yeah, we want everyone to be able to experience this truth and this gospel in a way that they can relate to. It. But that human element, it creeps in and it keeps people from being willing to share with other people the great truth and, and, and the practicality that we can find within the gospel. It's amazing. We, we do it backwards all the time. It says, Christ was the medium through which he could pour out his infinite love upon a fallen world. Again, this is the purpose why he was here. That first line that we read today, it was to redeem us that Christ lived and suffered and died. God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. God suffered with his son. In the agony of Gethsemane, the death of Calvary, the heart of infinite love paid the price of our redemption. And it was a big price because if the wage of sin is death and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that's, a, that's a, a huge penalty to pay when you think of all of humanity that's ever lived. You think of the crazy things that have happened in history, the, the great demonstrations of sin. There's a lot that he was sacrificing for. Jesus said, therefore, does my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it up again. That is, my father has so loved you that he even loves me more for giving my life to redeem you and becoming your substitute in surety by surrendering my life, by taking your liabilities, your transgressions. I am endeared to my father for by my sacrifice, God can be just and yet the justifier of him who believes in Jesus. I think that's so powerful. And again, there's a lesson there for us. Nowhere there did you see that did you see Christ saying that the father loved him because he did all the right things, because he followed all the commandments, because he, he never broke out of step from tradition or any of that? You don't hear any of that there. You hear that God has a great love for Christ because of Christ's love for us. And the way that that manifested in Christ's life showed in his willingness to sacrifice for us. When we look at what it really takes to follow in the footsteps of Christ, are we summing it up to a surface level? Let me make sure that I have all the right answers. Let me make sure that I know one through 10, A through Z, 28 fundamentals. A am, I, am I summing it up like I've done this and I've done this and I've checked off all the right boxes? 
if we are, I think we're doing it wrong. I don't see that from Christ's example. <laughs> you think about it. A lot of the stories of Christ's time here on earth involve him doing things that were actually breaking the laws that the Pharisees and the authorities of the time had in place. So it wasn't about that. It wasn't about keeping in with tradition. It had more to do with his love for humanity and his perception of every single person realizing that it was his duty to care, to have compassion, and to share, and to be one with those people, to sympathize, to empathize with them, that way they could see their need. And that's what would inspire them to accept the truth and to have curiosity about the truth that he wanted to share with them. That's what, that's what, for lack of a better way of explaining it, that's, that's what gives the, the Christian life its, its vigor. That's what makes it matter. That's what makes it meaningful. Our love for others, not a bunch of requirements. It's about relationship, not requirement. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Man, I guess I could go more, but I think I'm good for now because if I keep going, <laughs> I'm going to go for another couple pages. So I'm going to stop there. Comment your thoughts down below. Any questions? We're open. Discussion. Go ahead. We out here for that. But hey, it's early morning. Got some other stuff to do. So it's a Buff Missionary. Like, subscribe, and share. And we out. Peace.